Shooting time lapses or hyperlapses of sunset is great fun, but it's one of the most challenging things in photography and videography. I know that a lot of you are time lapse heroes and drone warriors. So, in this video, I'm going to attempt for the first time a day to night time lapse with a drone. So, fasten your seatbelts and let's get going. I've done gazillions of time lapses of sunset of all kinds with my Nikon D850, even the hardest one, the ones against the full setting sun. But it is a full frame DSLR camera mounted on a solid tripod. With drones, there are several hurdles to tackle. First of all, battery life. The time needed to shoot a full day to night time lapse varies according to where in the world you are. As an example, in London, the whole process would last from 2 to 3 hours. In Iceland, 3 to 4 hours. In Sicily, where I am now, in generally things go extremely slowly. But the only fast thing is sunsets. 30 to 45 minutes are enough. And when I first arrived here, I got full a couple of times with the setting, expecting a much longer process. I never attempted so far sunsets or sunrise time lapses with a drone, because with previous models of the Mavic line, battery life was just too short. But with the Mavic 3, we get a real life battery time of about 40 minutes, and considering the time for setting up and return to home, we can easily shoot a time lapse of 30 minutes and maybe even 35 minutes for true heroes. Uh, this doesn't mean that you cannot attend this type of shot if you live farther away from the equator. You will get a smaller portion of the process, so try to catch the best moment according to the scene. If it is a cityscape, the ideal one is when the city light take over from the light of the sun. You can also apply the same technique I'm showing here using other drones of the Mavic line, but the shooting time will be much shorter. Another limitation of drones is sensor size, as day to night time lapse require a huge dynamic range, therefore full frame cameras have a big advantage. But once again, the Mavic 3 makes things easier with a very respectable 4 thirds sensor and with a dynamic range never seen before in the Mavic line. When shooting with a traditional camera sitting on a tripod, we also have no drifting and the possibility to use an ND filter at the beginning of the shooting and to take it out during the process. For these reasons, I would not go for the mother of all sunset time lapses, the one against the full sun, at least this time. It is still great fun to see in a well-executed time-lapse the light of the sun going down, the sky going from the golden hour to the blue hour, and the artificial lights taking over. Another reason why these shots are more difficult is that we only get one chance per day. Therefore, plenty of work is involved for this video, and the thumbs up will be greatly appreciated. I have done two videos that explain in depth the most important factors to consider when shooting time lapses and hyperlapses. If you're a serious time lapse warrior, I suggest watching them. You will find a link at the end of this video and in the description below. This is the scene mighty Mount Etna with some interesting clouds and a small village in the foreground. The sun is to the left of the frame at about 9 o'clock position. First of all, we have the choice between a time lapse with a static point of view, in other words, with an aircraft hovering, or a hyperlapse with some drone movement. I would not consider a fast moving hyperlapse as it would distract from the main subject, which is the sunset. I decided to go for a static time lapse using the free mode in the hyperlapse menu of the Mavic 3. 
there will be some drifting, but hopefully I can stabilize it in post-processing. Another choice to make is whether or not to do focus ramping. In other words, modifying exposure values to increase the amount of light hitting the sensor after the sun disappears. It is a bit of a trade-off. Using focus ramping, the shadows at the end of the time lapse won't be too dark. But there will be some change in luminosity that we will have to try to reduce in post-processing. Without focus ramping, the flow of the time lapse will be smoother, but we risk having the last part of the clip too dark. In this case, I decide to do without focus ramping, hoping that the lights from the village will brighten the scene towards the end. I have to choose the values for exposure. I can keep the ISO on the lower value 100. I prefer to keep the aperture at the minimum value to get some nice star effect in the lights. The resulting shutter speed for the best exposure is 1 20th of a second. In most time lapses, I prefer to set shutter speed to around 1 second to make the most of motion blur. But in this case, there are no moving elements, so motion blur is not so crucial. I could put an ND64 filter and get a longer shutter speed, but it probably will be too long. So I'm a bit in between. And after all, for this scene, 1 20th of a second should do fine. Then I have to choose the frequency of shots. Since the main movement in this case will come from the clouds, one shot every 5 seconds will make the clouds move faster. The downside is that the resulting movie will be shorter, about 13 seconds. Let's try this value. I could do several other videos about sunsets or sunrise hyperlapses using different techniques and maybe also trying to go against the full sun with a drone. Let me know in the comment below if you are interested. In the last few months I've been using On One Photo Raw to organize my video and photo and post-process the raw file. It has a functionality to put together very quickly a time-lapse or hyperlapse. You will find a link to my video about On One Photo Raw in the description below, as well as a discount coupon for this product. As you can see, there is some drifting in the time-lapse, which is normal with the drone hovering in a static position. But after applying World Spabilizer in Premiere Pro, the clip is nice and stable. There is some pleasant cloud movement around Mount Etna. And after color grading, the transition of the colors in the sky and in the clouds is quite nice. One disappointing thing is that I was expecting more artificial lights to turn on in the village. For a nice shift in luminosity. Maybe electric light is not available here yet. As I said earlier, things move very slowly in Sicily, apart from sunsets. The cloud movement is nice and fast, but the resulting time lapse is a bit short, and the transition from day to night may be just a bit too fast. In other videos, I could try a frequency of one shot every 3 or 4 seconds then try one with exposure ramping, and maybe also one against the full sun. In this playlist you will find the two videos I mentioned earlier about time lapses and hyperlapses techniques. I will keep adding upcoming video of drone sunset or sunrise time lapses as soon as I will publish them. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting.